Hello everybody, welcome to our digital illustration storytelling with Jeff Wilson. Here we are, it's April 2022. This is our April 2022 edition. And uh, thanks again for joining us. My name is Tom Strinat. I'm the uh, lead digital artist of the Creator Space Project. And uh, yeah, I'm here just to introduce uh, Jeff. And I also want to remind everyone, uh, we do have all our partner libraries. So we have um, the uh, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library, where you can access iPads that feature, that are loaded with the Procreate software that Jeff's using as he demonstrates uh, the techniques. So you can take those out just like you can with any item with a library card. You just need to be a member at those libraries. And uh, please access that equipment. It's there for you. We hope you can, uh, then you can rewatch this session and, and follow along. So again, thanks to our partners. Also the Canon Council for the Arts, uh, the Digital Strategy Fund. Uh, for making this project happen. So we really appreciate that. So again, thanks for joining us. And uh, in terms of the, the software, uh, again, it is the, uh, the Procreate software. So we have Jeff Wilson, award-winning cartoonist, illustrator, animator, uh, who's in our area here in the uh, South Georgian Bay region. So really gr great to be able to profile and to get the insights and expertise of uh, our local artists as well. So definitely you can check out his work uh, that he has a, a online and also published work. So definitely check his stuff out and Procreate software. So this is what's available, iPad, iPhone versions. It's low cost, that's why we chose it. And again, it's available for public access through a library partner. So you can go take out those iPads and then use them. So all the library partners have iPads loaded with the software with Apple pencils. And that's exactly what Jeff's using. So. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff and he's going to take you on today's uh, exploration of uh, digital illustration, cartooning, and uh, all this uh, fun stuff. So here we go. Here's Jeff. Okay. Hi, uh, Tom. And hi, everyone out there. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome to April. Well, and hopefully springtime weather will be not far uh, ahead of us, but it uh, it's looking like a lovely day today. A little chilly out there, but uh, we're inside, so we're going to do some... Uh, some cartooning now. So we're, uh, what I use, as Tom said, is the uh, Procreate software, which is uh, a program that I was uh, introduced to by Tom. And um, uh, back when we were talking about doing these classes on it, it is a terrific program. It's uh, a lot of fun to, and I've learned so much. Um, you know, I've been doing cartooning for 25, 30 years and, and uh, got onto this and I'm still learning. So that's, Something for me to say, you can teach an old dog new tricks. So uh, let's get started. We're going to uh, do a little bit of uh, fun today. And fun that really, uh, that you can only have on a, on software like Procreate. This is a, a terrific software. And, and actually, our students have taught me some things that uh, I didn't know. And it's really, uh, we, we help each other. We kind of teach each other how to do things. Well, today, um, I'm not going to be just doing an illustration. I'm going to be doing a series of variations that we're going to be uh, combining into a, a cycle. Of, uh, of animation and we'll we can actually view the animation in procreate software so now as if we'll just turn over to the um, ipad here my ipad with the procreate software installed and we're going to draw this character now this is um this would be panel one of a of a very brief animation and it's what i call a cycle uh, it will be a uh, it will be animation, but it will actually be three drawings. I'm going in three drawings. I'm going to create a cycle of animation that will uh, repeat and will still look like it's moving in in um, um, in continuum. But it's actually just three drawings repeated, repeated, repeated. So let's get started here. We've got uh, a roughed out char uh, character here, and I'm just going to. Uh, I've just roughed it in, so I'm going to continue roughing the uh, the image in here. I just kind of ended at the where I had the hands here, where characters' hands were were showing here. So, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on some of the details here because um, this is um, going to be the the key drawing. And and then now animation and cartooning are two. You know, you'd think they were quite similar, but they're actually quite different. Um, quite different disciplines. And uh, for reasons that um, may not be obvious to you, but um, if you try to do both, um, I do know when I was in animation, I 
had a lot of trouble getting respect from the animators because they didn't think I could animate. So it was really a struggle for me to, um, and, and I even, my job was affected by it. I, I lost uh, some income because uh, some of the animators didn't, it wasn't even the, the, the my employers or my uh, superiors. It was other animators that complained about me getting into a certain position and I didn't have the, uh, the education or the experience yet, but I was doing the work and that was um, what my superiors were saying. So, but uh, in let's enough of that. Let's get on to what we're doing here. We can create this image of a um, a character. So let's call him um, let's call him a, a maybe a gorilla or that type of character. It's it's a um, it was the character that kind of inspired me at the time I was drawing this. So we're going to have kind of a determined look in this character's eyes here, and we're going to get. To, some gritting teeth here because they're determined. It's a lot like me this morning because <laughs> some mornings it's hard to get into the creative frame of mind. So this, this could be me this morning <laughs> struggling to get uh, my creative mind going here. So the, um, the, what's going on here is this character is moving forward. So we've got them leaning this way, this direction. Okay. So uh, what I want to do now is to um, add the line, add the, the nice solid black line. So we're going to create uh, a nice solid black line. I like to use the inking tool and the studio pen, as you see here. And I'm going to take the size percentage up to, let's go up to four, a nice thick 4%. And we'll start at the face here. I'd like to kind of start, and I'm going to increase that for the eyes, maybe up to 20% here for the eyes. Just give them a little thickness here and maybe reduce them a little bit, maybe down to eight or nine here for the uh, for the eyebrows. Right and left. And we'll have some very, I wouldn't want to say baggy eyes, but kind of uh, puffy eyes maybe. And... Um, and then we have the uh, faces of our, our gorilla here. So we're going to add this uh, mouth here, the determined look. So we're going to give the gritting teeth image here, and we'll give a nice furrow to the brow. And I will bring that line here. And here's the ear, of course. And then we'll have these two hairs at the top of the, of the uh, gorilla's head. And then we'll start building the rest of the uh, physique here. So what they have is their body leaning forward and their, their hands kind of moving backward here. So we're just kind of building uh, the final image here based on the rough drawing we did. Let's increase some of that uh, brush a bit. Thicken that up a bit here. I really like that. And we'll complete that. And then we'll just uh, add a little dimension to it. You notice when I do my final drawings, the thicker lines are at the bottom. So it's it's basically where I see the light going here. So if there's more light on top. Oh, I didn't like that line. I moved or something there. So I'm going to just try that, and I'm going to hold it, and it should hold it into an arc. That's the beauty about uh, in uh, sorry Procreate. You can do the line, and it will hold. If you hold it, it will um, it will mold to the shape you want there. There we go. So we have that, and then we have these circles I had here on the legs. And I'm going to just do a couple of uh, a couple of uh, kind of scribbly circles because the thing I'm trying to reproduce here is movement here and very rapid movement. So I've got some lines here showing where light would hit on the objects moving. Okay, so this would be this gorilla's feet moving very quickly. Okay, and um, so that would be 
let's go back here and take out layer one. So we have there the basic look of our character. I think I forgot a line here for the, but we can fill that in there nicely. I'll just take the eraser tool here and kind of trim down this little barb here. There we go. So there's our there's our little character there. So let's, this would be image one. So let's just get rid of that rough altogether. Let's trade layer two, and then we're going to duplicate it. Okay, so we'll take that one out. And what we're going to do here is um, uh, we, we can't see layer two anymore. So we're going to make this, yeah, let's make this layer two. Let's actually make this layer one because that was originally layer one. We'll just make it layer one again. Okay, so let's go to layer two. We've taken, unchecked the box for layer one. So layer two is checked here. So what we can do now is, uh, I think I'm going to erase that whole section here. And we're going to redraw that. We're going to redraw this and put another image in there. Okay, so um, it will look like something different now. So if we can go back to layer one again, we can see where that was. And so we can see both, but we have layer two highlighted. So layer two is highlighted, but we can see layer one. So we can still go back here, use our, um, our um, ink tool, and we'll do kind of the same thing we did before. We'll just do that uh, loopy loop here on the outside. And then what we're going to do now is put these um, lines in a separate place here. These little uh, light reflection lines. So this will give us a different uh, perspective than when, when this is, the two of them are shown back to back and side to side, front to back, whatever, what have you. And uh, this will be It's a lot of work for what we're doing here, but it's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna be surprised when you see it there. So that's image two of the three. And so we're gonna take that off and then we're going to duplicate image two. And we'll go back here and do the same thing. We're going to erase that line. Let's even take that out there so we can see what we're erasing. And that's okay if that part's blurry because um, there's there's movement there, so that that can be. So we're going to draw that line back in again, and we're going to same thing as we did before. We're going to redraw these little circles here. And it's just a little squibby line here. Don't have to worry if it's perfect or not. The whole idea is to make it look like it's there's movement, right? So so we're going to again. Do some of these motion lines here and then we're not doing a whole lot of work here really at this point but it is uh, we're, we are doing we're customizing every single panel here every single image that we're doing and it is giving the it is giving your drawing of some movement and some you know some dy dynamism that it really could use here so there you go Okay, so we have um, we have the three images here, and we can colorize these later, which which we'll be doing as well. But uh, I want to show you. You go to your uh, your wrench tool here, take it to uh, video, or sorry, to share. Uh, no, sorry, to canvas. <laughs> I did all that to don't actually go to canvas. You where you have the crop and resize. You don't even touch that when you go to animation assist. Okay. And you click on that. Now you have the three images here. If you highlight those three images, you'll notice here at the bottom, uh, you've got um kind of a, what we call onion skinning in animation, where you can see each layer 
uh, and as it goes down further, it's a, you, it's a little lighter, but you can see it in a way that it will change. So let's go to this first image, second image, third image. So um, you have three images there, and you have one image that stays the same in, in each one, and you will... Um, we're going to do it. Let's take it down to nine frames per second here in the settings. And we're just going to and make sure we have it as a loop too. If we have it as a loop, this is important because it will repeat. It will repeat the cycle. So let's uh, try it and see what happens. And you notice that it gives um, animation. It gives like an animation movement there. And this uh, this is what, what we try to do. <laughs> uh, when I was a boy, I remember watching cartoons and thinking, uh, how do they do that? They draw that every time, but it, it was doing what we just did here. They did a three three drawing cycle, and the artist probably did that in, in a few a few moments and we're on to another scene and, and, and doing the whole production. So it's amazing how time-saving learning things like this is, reusing uh, loops and um, cycles in animation. So... This is uh, great, so let's stop that. We're going to pause that, and we're going to let's get out of the animation assist again, and let's colorize our character. So let's go back to uh, drawing one here, and we're going to create a new layer, and this will be a layer with color in it. So we're going to pick kind of gorilla-like colors here, and we're going to colorize our character. And it should be fun to do that because... Um, it's sort of like a coloring book when you create the new layer and put it underneath and it and the line still shows up. This is a uh, the reason for this should become apparent later because um, we can save ourselves a lot of time doing what we're what we're about to do here as well. So we'll just color this whole uh, layer in. And there are probably faster ways of doing this, but uh, as I say, I am just learning this beautiful program of procreate and just uh, having so much fun with it and uh, and I just like to this is very relaxing for me just sitting here and drawing and filling in the you know filling in the uh, lines here let's do that with the hands too we'll just fill them in and uh, we'll uh, we'll do a nice job of, of coloring the character here and this hand was tricky to draw um, what I found when I used to draw monkeys' hands or, or ape-like hands, that is where I learned to draw human hands because they are like exaggerated human hands. If you've ever seen um, monkeys or uh, gorillas or apes of any kind uh, doing things with their hands, are very. Uh, it's amazing how they can. T uh, their their hands are very sensitive and very powerful and can and yet very sensitive and can do things very well <laughs> better than I can but um, I remember learning from looking at, at a hand and uh, on a chimpanzee or on a on a gorilla and I thought wow that's how I could I could draw human hands better because of of that experience of learning how to uh, draw an ape's hands so here we'll just follow through with that Okay, and then we'll just draw the, colorize the, um, this part of the mouth here. And um, a little lighter, I would make it a little lighter because the, um, the gorillas tend to have more hair on their face and head and then less around their mouth and nose. And that's just good... Um, you know, that's just because they're, um, it's just easier for them to eat and do things with their mouth if they have, they don't have hair to, to keep <laughs> in their food all the time. So there we go. So there we've got the colorized uh, ape character. So this color layer is not something we're going to uh, forget about entirely either. We're going to duplicate this as well and put one behind each of these other ones as well. So we're... We're going to use these two. These are all going to be part of our, um, oh, 
I, I think I should have put this down here. I think this should have gone under that one. There we go. I think that's better. So if we just unhighlight these top two here and we just have these ones, we can um, colorize around this, this stuff here and we can use a different color. We can use, um, oh, I would use a gray color because it would be like, it would be moving so fast, all the colors would be blending in together. So it'd be like a gray or a, an off gray. So that's maybe because of the, the uh, gorilla's color, the, the color of his fur, we're going to make it a little more brown, I think. Let's take that down a bit. So we'll make the gray kind of this color here, this kind of gray, brown gray. So we're going to, with that, we're going to, instead of using our um, ink tool, we're going to use our airbrush tool because these are parts of the body that are moving fairly rapidly. So blurring would be very logical. Okay, so we're going to, with that in mind, maybe take the opacity down a bit and take up our brush size with the blur and then just kind of circle there it doesn't have to be perfect and um and we can use our white here and kind of give it a little extra light i'm going to take up the opacity a bit here and kind of give some highlighting in here See what's happening now? We're creating that that movement here. That it's almost like a fan. If you think of a, the the concept of a fan, you'll you'll understand what I'm doing here. Okay, so there's that image now, and we're going to try this one. We're going to try this image here. Oops, uh, let's try this one here. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did there. We're going to take our brush tool, take down the opacity a bit, and we'll go to the that nice off, and, and it should have saved in our history. If, if not, we can go back to here, to this one again, and just put our finger, hold our finger on that, and it will automatically take it up, into the, draw it into the ink brush tool, and then it'll, it'll show up here. So we'll just take that off again, go back to here again, and it will, um, we should be able to reproduce what we just did there. So we'll create that. Kind of that loopy circle thing that we did. It, as I said, if it's a little out of the lines, a little, it's cre it's still creating that movement. So we're going to go to that uh, the white, reduce our opacity, and we can get these little motion lines. And it it looks kind of blurry because it would be blurry if it was like a the fan I was talking about a fan or a propeller on a old airplanes that used to have propellers and some of them still do the the propeller propelling system is still considered pretty good i think by by a lot of pilots so uh it's not something to not so, certainly not old technology by any means we'll just do that okay there's our second one and then here's our third panel we're going to just do the same thing we're going to take the same do the same thing guys we're going to go back here yeah if you want to you could put a few backwards too i, I forgot that i could have done that too i and some of these others i could have just uh yeah, let's try it for this one too just kind of back behind them because this this is moving forward this will help with that that illusion that it's moving forward too so there we go and then we'll uh with that in mind, we will go back to the uh, that white tool and we will take up the opacity. We'll take down our, uh, let's uh, show the black line here too. I think that's really important to show it with the black line because it'll give us an idea where this white these white lines need to be here as we do this. And uh, we're getting we're getting there. It's going to be great. Okay, so, okay, there we, we have it. So we have our, our drawings now. So what, what I would normally do, uh, just to keep this from being too confusing, would be to um, draw these into the, and create a group. And we'll draw the layers into the, under the black line here. 
into a new group. And that way it um, keeps these together. That doesn't, they don't get out of place because you, you can touch these and move them out of place and out of sync. So, um, which isn't, isn't uh, un impossible to fix, but it, it just can take you a little extra time to do that. Okay, so we're going to go back to the canvas. We're gonna go back to the animation assist. And here we go. We're going to, oh, and you notice something's wrong there. One of the black lines did not, did not, is not on. It's this one here. Okay, and it's actually two of them. The two of the black lines were turned off, and I forgot about that. So there you go, though. And now it's now it's animating. <laughs> okay, so now um, this is a problem I had recently that I'm I'm going to show you now that um, to show a, a moving background <laughs> or to show a background on which it will look like it's moving, but it actually isn't. And um, so. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take off of two of these groups here. I'm going to say uh, let's rename these to cycle cycle one cycle two. That's a great idea. I think I should do that. Cycle two and cycle three, and then and then it's not confusing to me. Three. And then it won't confuse me. The filing is very important in digital art. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed it, but it really helps you. Uh, if you know how to file things, if you're a good file clerk, you probably will do well in digital arts. But uh, that's just my opinion. Um, let's go to a new, we're going to create a new layer here. Oh, and I forgot to go to our um, our actions and turn off our animation assist. And this will just, just be temporary here. And it, we're going to do this layer behind cycle one so that it will be basically like a background to cycle one here. So the, the, again, the idea what we're going to try to duplicate here is movement. So um, what I'd like to show is like a kind of a natural setting. So it would have a blue sky and probably green in the foreground, green and brown for the foreground, meaning uh, grass and uh, earth. So we're going to do something here. We're going to, you know, let's see, let's try a nice natural green here. Let's make a little, we'll start with this one here and we'll put it in the brush form. So we're going to kind of um, widen that brush a bit. And you see what I'm doing here? I'm just kind of swiping back and forth here. And it's, it's not too fancy. I'm going to, Increase some of the green here a bit and increase the brush size here. And, okay, and then, then I'm going to do some blue for the sky. So I'm going to change my colors a little more, a little lighter for the blue sky. And we're going to go do that now. So this area here will get blue in. We'll just maybe do it right up to the top. And... Um, as we get higher, if, if you've studied nature at all, you, you notice that at the top of the sky, higher you go in the sky, it's a little bluer as you get higher. As you get lower toward the horizon, it shows a little more uh, light blue because uh, the reason being is that um, it's the atmosphere. Uh, it builds up as you, you're you looking, um, when you're looking on the horizon, you're looking at the combined atmosphere, which, which is a lot more particles, so it, it appears whiter. So uh, we're going to just take a little white too and we're going to just kind of blob that in there too and in, in places here just just lightly okay so that's our one layer we're going to do and we're going to duplicate that and uh so i'm just going to take out cycle one and we're going to kind of do the same thing we did before we're just going to create a layer here with the blue and then we'll just to mix it up, we're going to throw in this green a little bit here. And we might in, you know, throw a little bit of the green here. <laughs> just to be different. Just because I like to, you know, 
a little differently here. And then the, the thicker blue, the heavier blue at the top. And you can just just tuck, tuck it in here too. And you can take your white and you can just uh, reduce it, just make it smaller. Something different. <laughs> There's our cycle two. And let's make another cycle two of that. And uh, and what we might do is you can do this too, where you don't have to change the scene. You can just kind of paint over it as well. Like we can, uh, let's try this. Yeah, let's try the soft brush and we'll try the, we will try the green here again. Let's see, why isn't that showing? Because that's on top of it, of course. <laughs> These are the two here, so. And the reason being is because that's there too, so. Okay, let's uh, take the blue again. And then the dark blue on top. And then we're just going to play, you know, with a little bit of that, a little bit more with those blues. And then, and then the whites, of course. Now we're, now we are cooking. This is, looks quite a bit different now with all the whites. Increase that a bit and increase the opacity of that. So each image should be quite different. So what we're going to do now is we've got these three cycles um that we will show you here let's go back here animation assist again and it looks like the background is moving and that's going to come in handy in for just this reason we are going to take this background put it in to this cycle we doesn't matter at this point because these are just kind of random movements and we're going to put them in, in the cycle here. So that will put that at the back of that drawing. And then we're going to do the same with this one here, put it at the back of that drawing. So what it does when it goes into these images, it goes directly to the background. As If we expand this cycle one, you will see that that background I put in is right at the back here, right at the back of the, uh, of, the uh, of our gorilla. Okay, so what we're going to do now We've got our three in the, in the cycle, and we're going to take that window down, and voila. We've got kind of a really fast-running gorilla, and uh, all, all with three, basically three or four drawings. You created this, and uh, it will be fun. You, you will have a lot of fun. You'll probably sit there all day and, and look at it like I do. <laughs> Marvel at what you did. There you go. And of course you can see all the mistakes you made. <laughs> go back and try to correct them. Let's go to cycle one here. What I'm noticing actually folks is that I didn't color in this guy's eyes here. So I'm, I'm going to make these eyes a kind of a yellow. Let's change that. Let's make that the inking tool and we will go to the studio pen if it will allow me, but it's, we must be having some connectivity issues. I'm just having a bit of a, problem there with that so i will just fill that in yeah i should have done that right at the start when we we could have saved ourselves some time but we we will do it now so we'll make the teeth white though okay and then we'll do that for all of these all along here so we're going to go to to this one now and we'll do the same thing we'll kind of make the teeth white here and you see the background showing through nicely, which is which is what you want. I mean, this is fantastic to be able to do this and to um, see the see a background. I mean, this was something that was unheard of when I used to do this stuff. How could you do something and then watch it move before you? I mean, you had to get a – we used to have uh, – Flip the paper, flip the uh, animation paper. I don't know if, if you've ever seen videos of that. You'd, um, 
I worked in a studio where that's what we did. We had to flip the papers. That's like a flip book, basically a flip book concept. And uh, that's all we had. But now you have Procreate, another really great uh, drawing software. Okay, let's give it another try. Okay. And there you go. And that's, uh, that's your running ape. And you can add details to that too. We can, uh, we can actually, by doing some uh, customized things too, we can make it look like he's he's moving by doing some shading here on, on the back on the on his uh, coat. I guess we've already done the background and have it moving. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, texture shading on on the uh, um, the gorilla's coat here. So let's find a nice texture. Let's find. Uh, no, I don't really like those. I'm looking for a texture here. So I'm going to go into textures and see if we can find something fairly, fairly rough. The, the Mila, Malaluka is a good one. I've used that before and it does work very well. So what I'm going to do with that is uh, increase the brown in his, uh, in his fur. And we're going to adjust the opacity and the um, the width of our brush here. And we're going to do a little shading around the face and ears in the back here. And uh, maybe, let's see, maybe down in here too. Okay, so we're going to do that each one in a custom way. And you will be surprised that as we do that, it will bring life to this character each time it, it happens. So we're going to do it with this one too. Just a little touch of of shading. It can add a lot of life to your drawing. Okay, so let's try that one. And lastly, let's do this one here. We've got uh, And if you want to as well, we can have fun with this little, this little hair on the top of his head too. Just had uh, realized that I had not really, I could have played with that animation a bit. So we're going to, in that I think more than the other one, we're going to uh, change that a bit. We're just going to, let's see, how can we do this? We could just take our, um, yeah, what we're actually going to do is just erase it, erase that, and then move it. I got, I got to change the tool. I keep thinking that it, it knows what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's a common thing for me to think that it, this machine knows what I'm what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to increase that brush tool here, so we get the black line again. And we're going to uh, fill that in and do that. So this is our first one, second one, and third one. We're going to take these out again. And we're going to... <laughs> give ourselves quite a animation now. So as the light changes on the body, you will see the, um, let's see, let's just zoom in a bit here and, and point out some things here. You, as a bot, as the light changes on the body, it indicates that they're moving so quickly that the light sources from other directions are, are hitting, hitting the body. And, um, 
and causing a different life of, uh, effect of light. <laughs> so if you're if you remember movies like I don't know if you're a movie watcher like me, uh, you've watched Batman or any show like that where where Batman's driving the Batmobile really fast and he's going down a city street and the light is hitting his uh, face differently each each uh, millisecond he goes. Uh, this is kind of the effect that we're getting here. So get a very fast running uh, uh, gorilla here and uh, and light changing and, and moving. It's, uh, it, it's, you could sit here and look at it all day. And, uh, and I probably, I probably will as I'm uh, talking to you. And, uh, and let's just uh, reiterate how we did it. And it's, um, and once you do this too, you, you can reduce your, file size. So if you had a, an idea that you'd like to do more in this cartoon or in this particular animation, you could save yourself some uh, layers by going to these layers and flattening them. You can go to the flatten uh, and, and it'll become one layer. It'll just basically flatten your layer. Let's try it with this one to flatten layer. And we'll do the same here. We'll flatten layer. So what we've done is we could create ourselves some some extra room for more animation if we wish to do so because I believe it does tell us in the uh, the layers here how many more we have we can do. Let's see, it might tell us somewhere here <laughs> in the canvas here. Yeah, there's only so many more we can do here. Anyway, it uh, we can sign our name here, uh, Running Gorilla. Yeah, this is by going into our our um, our layers here. Here's our layers here. So we've used three layers. We have 56 available. So you could you could animate quite a sophisticated piece here if you wanted to. If you really wanted to go snake crazy, uh, total a, a total of 59 would be available in this particular animation. So so that's just by merely going into your uh, yeah your your canvas tool. And then your canvas information, so that, that's here. And then you have your a lot of information here. It tells you your dimensions, tells you your the number of layers you have, your color stuff, which, which is great to me, your video settings, um, statistics. And if, if you're smart, and what I often do is I go in here to video. And you have the option of doing the time-lapse replay, and it will play a little movie of how you designed your, your piece here too. This is a very exciting and it's not, um, it, it actually, you might learn a little bit from yourself doing, doing what we've been doing here. So this is a doing a, a little movie going through all our processes and time lapsing through them and, and giving you a little, someone else, a little idea of how you did what you did. And there's our backgrounds that we're doing here. We, we filled in the eyes and the mouth in the mouth there. And then we, and there, there it is. There's our time-lapse right there. So that was uh 35 second breakdown of what we did there, which is um, great. And uh, so let's, let's review from the start here. The time-lapse pretty much told us too. We had uh, the one drawing that I roughed out. I added these uh, circles for the running feet. And then we colored, uh, we did that three times with the same uh, foreground. And we created an animation with that. Then we added the color and then we added three blurry backgrounds that are moving right to left and added them together. We combined the drawings and we had this animated running gorilla. And uh, that's uh, pretty much the lesson, I think. Now, what what I would do with this, what you, what else you can do with this too, is uh, you can share this. If you can share this as a uh, an animated GIF, and you can share it somewhere as a GIF, or you can uh, as a PN, animated PNG, an animated uh, MP4, and you can. Uh, and Tom and I have been doing some in person classes, and we've been talking about exporting these to other programs like iMovie. We're going to create a new movie here and we can uh, watch it here. So it's a, it's a three second movie, right? 
But what you can do is duplicate this. Duplicate, 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 duplicate. So I've duplicated this about six times. Okay, and then you've got your cycle. You've got your cycle and it will, and then you can export this again and create a new movie. So it's really great. That's really great what you can do. And you can, this is really fun part of it too, is because you could just take your uh, Apple pencil and just kind of scroll gently and you can really, it's just like um, what I call onion skinning, but it's actually like uh, flipping your, your animation paper and, and seeing the movement. And uh, there you go. So that shows you that your iPad is like a little media, little media center. You, uh, what used to be, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, well, probably thousands of dollars equipment. And it's all, ex you know, expanded, not expanded, but uh, compressed into this one terrific item here, this uh, iPad. So so I'm just going to cancel that because I don't know if I want to keep this as a movie, but it shows you that you could. And uh, what else could you do? Well, you could, um, this is really fun too. You can, it's because you have done the um, uh, uh, sorry, it, I, I just kind of had a brain lapse there. But if because you have done the uh, the drawing, you can actually go into your arrow tool at the top and you can flip it. You can flip all your drawings and have them running the other way, <laughs> right? And we'll do that with this one too, arrow tool and flip horizontal. Okay, so we'll take that out of there, hit deactivate that. And when we have our, and it, it, it's still the same effect, it's just running the opposite way. So you could have, uh, <laughs> you could change one of them a little bit, change the look and then uh, have them, I don't know, let's see. Let's try it this way and see if, what it would look like. We'll, um, we're going to, Share this to export it to iMovie. Okay. Try it again. We'll, we'll try that one again. We'll, we'll, we'll pop that here. So we'll edit this one and we will put it here. We'll put it in this one. Or will we? Maybe we won't. It's not going to let me. Okay, we, the, the thinking was that I could just, uh, uh, maybe I can't. Maybe I have to create a new movie for it. So let's, let's just try that. Let's go back here. I apologize. I, I'm just kind of thinking what you could do with this. So we will try to export it again. We'll export it as an MP4. We're going into iMovie. So we're going to create a new movie then. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do though is, is copy this and then uh, okay where's our other movie there well we could um, create a movie I guess here so that's what we'll do we'll just create a movie so Fun. <laughs> anyway, you you can make movies of these. Um, it's a totally different thing altogether. But uh, I think at this point, I uh, I think we've done as far as we can with the drawing part of it. So I'm just going to turn it back to Tom. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. That was fantastic. Yeah, really, really always great to see these uh, these concepts. Uh, in action. So, uh, yeah. So again, you can, um, uh, you know, you'll be able to rewatch this session. So we have, you know, this is available, um, right now as you're watching, but then once we're done, you can rewatch it. So don't worry about, you know, if you want to, uh, uh, experiment with anything that, that Jeff has, uh, shown you. Um, and we really encourage the rewatching cause I think that's the great time to, uh, you know, to be able to, um, uh, to, to try some of the things that Jeff's explored and, and showing you guys and that, you know, the cycling and the, the, the multiple frames. And it's uh, like you said, you can, 
you can uh, continue with this in, in so many different uh, avenues and try so many different things. And, and, uh, and you know, that um, seeing what's working, what's not working, and that's really all part of it is, is identifying what's working, what's not working and troubleshooting. And I think that's with any of the digital arts. And I think that's the great thing is that it's not complicated as Jeff's showing to, to go in and fix things um, because it is digital and it's, uh, it's pretty uh, quick and nimble to get into the layers and, and change things. So I think that's a real good takeaway of how quickly uh, you, know, you, can, you can kind of proof and edit and uh, your work and, and continue it from there. So yeah, really, really great session in terms of that. Um, we do have some more um, uh, workshop uh, videos you can still watch uh, on our YouTube channel. So we have uh, a variety of those. So check those out too, tbmcs.ca is our website. So tbmcs.ca. I wanna thank all our partners uh, again in this project for making this happen. Thanks again to Jeff for taking the time to, to do this and his uh, invaluable uh, lessons that we have. Uh, and uh, if you are watching and uh, we have our, our uh, like youth programming, so ages 8 to 13 in person continuing. So Blue Mountains Public Library, Wasabi Beach Public Library and the Collingwood Public Library. They start up again uh, uh, next week and a couple weeks after that. And uh, so those are Saturdays. So do check those out through the, each library if you're a member there. Uh, parents or uh, youth, if you're watching, please do check it out. We'd love to see you in person too to continue uh, exploring things. So again, thanks to our uh, partners here at Canada Council for the Arts and all our library partners where you can access these uh, iPads with Apple Pencil and Procreate. So thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you again. Don't forget to sign up for those. Uh, we also will have a May and June online session. So continue joining us virtually and then we'll see you in person uh, in the coming weeks as well. So all the best and have a great rest of the day. Take care.